Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I watched WWE NXT episode 552 and NXT UK episode 84, broadcast on March 11th and 12th, 2020. Um, so it's it's been, well, I don't think I have to tell anybody. I'm recording this on March 12th, 2020. And yeah, it's it's all kinds of stuff going on that I could just talk about everything for 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 hours, days. But uh, I'll I'll just say this, and and this is a good this is a this is good to do anytime. Just make this a habit. Then you don't have to change your habits when uh when when there's an issue like uh like a virus going around. You know, wash your hands. Like everybody should just wash your hands anyway. Like, just it shouldn't take. Okay, man, it shouldn't take an a viral outbreak, a, a potentially deadly. It it shouldn't require that for everybody to just wash your damn hands. That's that's like bare minimum level of of hygiene for being a member of society as far as I'm concerned. Just like that should just be standard. We shouldn't have that that shouldn't even be a problem. But everybody's talking about it, reminding everybody else just wash your hands. Use soap and water. Don't just rinse your hands off. Use soap and water. Wash your hands and that's it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that in this episode. Oh man. Um so some of these matches on these uh on both of these shows, I mean, a lot of the most of the matches on NXT UK, I was not paying attention to very much at all. So, I this isn't going to be a very good episode, but I didn't want to talk about it cuz there's a lot of stuff that I enjoyed, especially on NXT. I mean, there's stuff that I really enjoyed on NXT UK as well. Um Man, there's a really yeah, there's a really funny quote that I uh hopefully I can remember the inflection of it. But I'll get to that. But anyway, man, yeah, it's been I'm uh uh yeah, it's it's a lot going on for everybody. So that that's part of the reason I don't want to I, I'm gonna stop dwelling on it because hopefully you can listen to this and now that we've got past the whole washing the hands part of the show and just talk about this just talk about wrestling um i am going to talk about some of the the potential developments that have been unfolding throughout the day as far as wrestling goes i'll we'll talk about that at the end of this episode so anyway um okay first we have on nxt we opened up with keith lee versus cameron Grimes. cameron grimes for the North American Championship, uh, there's this really impressive bridging suplex uh, delivered to Keith Lee by Cameron Grimes. That was super impressive. Um, but uh, Keith Lee ended up winning via the big catastrophe, I think it's called. Um, and then uh, Damian Priest attacks Keith Lee with a nightstick. And da uh, Dominic Dijakovic comes out to, to save uh to save lee by by you know scaring off damian priest and um uh, when he was attacked keith lee dropped his championship so damian da uh dominic was to pick that up to give it back to him but keith turns and sees him and assumes oh he, you're the one that attacked me what the hell so he hits him with the spirit bomb and a big big misunderstanding hopefully keith lee goes back and watches this episode otherwise He's a, he's he's a, he's just a punk. You don't go back and watch the show, see what actually happened. That's that's irresponsible. Everybody should be watching the show back so they can figure out what kind of stuff happened when they weren't in the room or when they were knocked out cold on the ground. So, anyway, that it was a good it was a good opening segment. And then we had Mia Yim versus Dakota Kai. Uh of course, Raquel uh Raquel Gonzalez um, came out with Dakota and uh, was a big factor in the match. Too much of a factor in the match. In fact, in factor. 
Uh, she tried to distract the referee so Dakota could get the upper hand, but Dakota went for the pin, would have gotten the pinfall, but Raquel was still distracting the referee. So the referee didn't get over there in time to count the, 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 count the pin. And Mia Yim uh, got the advantage back and uh, won the match. This is a qualifier for the ladder match at TakeOver. So Dakota Kai will not be in that match. As far as we're concerned with these results, who knows anything could happen up until then if TakeOver even happens. But we'll get we'll get to that and many more things eventually. Uh, then we had Kushida versus Raul Mendoza. Uh, this was just a crazy cool finish. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe he does this a lot. And I just missed other times that he's done it. But I was super impressed. with It was like a Spanish fly, but it went directly. Like he landed in the arm bar and Mendoza tapped out. That was so cool. Um, but yeah, go check out that match. That was the only note that I took from it. But I remember enjoying the rest of it as well. Um, then we had backstage. Austin Theory approaches Tyler Breeze saying he's a big fan and that it was a shame that Tyler Breeze never reached mega stardom. And then Tyler Breeze takes his picture and says, oh, look at that. Looks pretty great for a flash in the pan. And then he drops his phone like a microphone. He didn't drop his phone. But uh, mic drop, leave. That was pretty good. He also didn't drop a microphone because it was suspended above him uh, by, by a boom. Or perhaps it was just attached to the camera that they're using. That's much more likely, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, we didn't see behind the scenes of that that scene. Uh, then we have Rhea Ripley come out. Um, she's talking about having, uh, about getting through all the pressure that's on her, uh, that it's easy or that it, it makes, uh, it helps her get through it by uh, having fun knocking out the queen on her, kn knocking the queen on her royal ass that's what she says um so then charlotte comes out because she heard royal ass and she's like oh that's me i gotta go out there <laughs> um she comes out uh big go back to raw chance and then uh they brawl and charlotte uh delivers the figure four uh to Rhea with her legs wrapped around the ring post so that was pretty brutal so charlotte has the upper hand here which means They've both got to show up on SmackDown so that the, the odds are even. The odds are e even the... Oh, isn't that... That's a... I just realized the strangeness of that turn of phrase. If you even the odds. Even the odds. It's... Uh, that it's it, it has right in there opposites. I never even realized that. Interesting. Interesting. Something that every that everybody realizes, probably. And I'm real dumb. Anyway, then we had Tegan Knox versus Deanna Prazzo in another qualifier match. And I thought, for sure, for sure, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. I keep having to think of her name as I still think of her as Reina. But it's, um, I, I thought for sure they were going to interfere but Tegan Knox got the win. Tegan will be in the ladder match. So I think, I, I, I'm guessing, my theory is that Raquel Gonzalez is going to fight, face somebody next week or the week after that for another qualifier match. There's still three more spots in that ladder match. She's going to face somebody and Raquel is going to be in the ladder match. And she perhaps will win that opportunity but give it to get to dakota kai i think it's i think it's a possibility we'll see what what, what unfolds in the following weeks oh by the way this episode was broadcast this is going to be important in a minute it was broadcast out of the performance center as opposed to full sale live um it seemed like a a, a smaller space but not really that much smaller uh maybe like five fewer Excuse me. Five fewer, all these Fs and saliva are not mixing well or mixing too well. All five, maybe like five fewer rows of seats, at least what you see on TV. And then uh, just like 
maybe it looked like there's maybe only one row of actual seats on the the hard camera side so on the production side of things but it, there there's only usually like two rows of seats over on that side anyway for the most part and then like an uh, another very small set of risers over there um so i'd say it was it didn't feel that much smaller of an audience to me and uh the performance center having that big wall with the performance center letters on there and stuff i thought that was a pretty cool look and then seeing all the flags up on the rafters um i thought that was really cool too so it had it was de it's definitely a very different look being in there but i felt like the crowd uh, the fans that were there were just as passionate at the, as they are um, at Full Sail Live, and I don't think the the show suffered one bit, not one single bit, did the show suffer. In fact, it may have benefited quite a lot because they were able to do something really cool, but we'll get to that in just a second, because then we had Undisputed Era versus uh, Matt Riddle and Pete Dunne. Um, let's see uh velveteen dream enters and calls the undisputed this is before riddle and dunn come out uh he enters on that perch they call it the perch uh that elevated area above the the announce tables um announced table just the one uh but dream comes up there and he, he calls them four little men but he only has uh he's only worried about one of them um during the match there's all kinds of great stuff that happened this is a great match to check out but at one point pete dunn fakes as though he's been attacked by adam cole because uh matt riddle throws cole into the fire <laughs> that was dumb i'm sorry um <laughs> he throws him into the ring he's not a part of the match it's 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 bobby fish and kyle o'reilly um well the referee is distracted by something else and then he turns so yeah Dunn like claps and then falls down on the ground and then adam cole's like what what are you doing and the referee turns around he's like hey what's going on here and uh don is like hey, they're all miming all of this which is the most fun part and roger strong comes in, he's like no 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 he was faking like that and he was like miming faking it and then matt real comes in, he was like no 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 no. he was like mimes the super kick he super kicked him right in the face and all that kind of stuff and that was that was probably my favorite part of this whole well up to this point it was my favorite part of this whole episode um but yeah the mime explanations was great uh, uh roderick strong and adam cole got ejected from the match but then the the grizzled young veterans came out and they're a distraction um dunn fights them off uh bobby fish uh gets thrown right into them um but then uh final flash was hit on kyle o'reilly there's a big old combination and uh they got the win to retain the championships so it's looking pretty pretty much like it's going to be either a traditional tag team match uh uh riddle and dunn versus grizzled young veterans or or a triple threat throw undisputed era in there but it's, it'll probably be i i I think in either of those situations, Grizzled Young Veterans become the first tag team to win both the NXT UK and NXT Tag Team Championships. And then one day they'll head over to Raw, they'll win those tag team championships, they'll go to SmackDown, win those championships, be the first ever uh, full full house for <laughs> champion. That's not it. It's um. Why can't I think of what it is? Grand Slam. That's what it, the very first Grand Slam tag team champions in, in WWE. Perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that match, especially for the miming part of it. So then we have Champa come out. Uh, he's doing things Gargano style. But then Gargano uh, shows up on the screen. He's in the conference room, just somewhere else in the building. And... Um, Oh yeah, Gargano is like, why, why is Champa? Why are you okay with him coming? Why is he redeemed? This doesn't make any sense. He has a good point. Uh, but Champa, angry that he's been interrupted and all that and all the the crap that Gargano's been talking in general, um, he goes to find him. And he's in the conference room, 
and I already say he was in the conference room, but he goes and finds him in the conference room and they just start brawling. They, they tear things up in their chairs all over the place. They uh, end up in the fitness room. They're using the weights as they're throwing each other into the machines and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, they're using that, the, 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 the weight plates as weapons. And then I don't know what was thrown into the wall, but a big section of the mirrors on the wall gets totally shattered to smithereens. And then they keep on fighting. They uh, they go out onto the um, onto they end up on the perch, the perch that I was just talking about that is important that it's there. Um, that uh, they end up on that perch and they're just tearing it apart. They're, it's one's about to go off into the the commentator commentary table, other ones about to go. They do all kinds of stuff stuff that you would you'd normally do through the ropes of the ring but they do through the railing of of this perch that that was a pretty cool thing but eventually it's teased that the the burning i think it's a burning hammer gargano is going to deliver the burning hammer to tommaso champa put him through that table but it's ultimately tommaso champa delivers the burning hammer to gargano and we end with him having smashed through the commentary table from like 10 feet up maybe 15 feet up. It might've been 30 feet up, but re- more realistically is about eight feet. I think that's how tall that perch is, but uh, it looks like it's a lot taller on TV. Having been there in person a couple of times, it, it was not nearly as tall as I was expecting it to be from what I had seen on television. That's all I'm saying. So it's probably like eight feet. It might have only been like six feet, to be honest. It's they were they were like two steps up. It was like three. It's like a three foot drop, really. I mean, if you subtract the height of the the table surface, that takes away three feet right there. So it really was like five feet, and then they went a little bit further, um, at a lower moment with with a lower momentum. <laughs> that is, is is momentum lower or higher? I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've taken physics. I was back in like 11th grade, maybe 12, maybe maybe in my senior year. I think I took physics my senior year. My junior year I took oceanography. So I learned all kinds of stuff that I don't remember <laughs> about sea life. But anyway, um uh, yeah, this whole last segment, like the whole like last hour of the show was great. The whole first hour of the show was was pretty solid. So the the full two hours of the show, really, really cool. And yeah, so before we get into NXT, so NXT UK was filmed like last weekend. Um, so it was before all the events of this week since then have unfolded, obviously. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of those events as, in regards to filming shows and all of that so uh it was a scheduling issue i think it's because it was a uh, graduation for full sale um and they use nxt uh, they use full sale live for that um which I, which is cool is um my friend shannon who i met at nxt check out spot callers the game or spot callers game i think it's on instagram anyway um I, uh, that's his game that he's working on and um he graduated from full sale and uh the first time uh that we met is saying, like, oh i haven't been in here since um since i graduated it's so different like because it has all this stuff in here and all that kind of thing so um anyway uh yeah so they couldn't use full sale this week because they, they're doing the graduation i think um and so they did the performance center thing and it's uh i think it's it really served a dual purpose to to see if they would be able to broadcast like to actual television you know to the usa network from i mean the the venue does doesn't really matter as long as you have enough electricity to run all of your equipment that you have at other venues right but um yeah, uh, there's quickly, very quickly, rumors that uh, the SmackDown in Detroit this week um, that'll be on Friday the thirteenth, cursed Friday the thirteenth, and it turns out it's already it's we're we're cursed before then be, before the thirteenth has even come, but um, uh, 
there was talks about the possibility of running SmackDown out of the Performance Center as well. And if that is true, it turns out that, that they are doing that. Um, but uh, NXT being like the trial run for it uh, to see if it if they could make it work. I think that it was like a double uh, a double purpose sort of thing. And I think that may also that makes sense now why they didn't book a bigger venue that they didn't go to like a college arena or something like that, so that perhaps they did know that this could be a possibility that they should at least try this out. And maybe they're having to implement it for other options a lot sooner than they thought, or may, hopefully wouldn't have had to do it at all. But uh, to move SmackDown from Detroit, I assume the Little Caesars Arena probably, um, to move it from there and instead into this the, the Performance Center, which is not a TV studio. It's not an arena. It is there where they it's where they practice. So it's a very, very different change, uh, different environments. But I am hopeful that, well, first of all, it's it's a good thing they're doing that. I mean, they were forced to not be able to have the show in Detroit to begin with. Uh, so it was um, kind of a have-to situation. But um, it's good that the, the that precaution is, is taking place um, on the venue's part, absolutely, on the city's part. Um, to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, um, COVID-19. I'll refer to it as that because that's uh, coronavirus is the type of virus that it is. There's many of those from what I understand and it, because it is specifically COVID-19 um, coronavirus disease. 19 for 2000. I think it's because it started in 2019 at the end there. But anyway, um, uh yeah i th i think this could be a real it's it's going to be interesting but it's it, i feel like it's a really big opportunity to do some really experimental stuff like do do a lot more cinematic stuff do some like mix in a lot more pre-taped sort of things um i i'm sure they're gonna have a lot of fun with firefly funhouse um maybe not right away uh it might be too short notice to prepare a lot of that but if this becomes a week-to-week -week thing I th it could be really really cool to see what what they come up with creatively uh to make make the show as interesting as possible in the absence with the absence of having uh a, you know an arena full of people cheering and booing and all that kind of stuff so yeah, I'm excited to see what happens uh, from a TV watching standpoint. However, I am not too excited at the prospect of WrestleMania and all the events around it that week being canceled. Um, it, it's it, it's going to be it, it'll be such a bummer. But at this point, I feel like there is no way that WrestleMania is going to take place the way it has been planned at Raymond James Stadium uh, and all of the, the shows at Amelie Arena. I think it's all, they're going to be in contingency mode. They're uh, in whatever situation, be it from the Performance Center or whatever. I think that is going to be the norm for the next couple of months, really. So I, I am really, WrestleMania is so fun. Access is one of my favorite things. Like just in, just my, which is one of my favorite things, not just one of my favorite things in wrestling, but like it's the most fun that I've had, period, is going to Access. Meeting wrestlers, getting pictures with them, talking to them a little bit, and then seeing matches, having the best seats for a match that I've ever had and you have all these NXT talent that are there and sometimes there was even you, you get to see like a Samoa Joe come out and and talk to everybody for a little bit or even Triple H appears and addresses to the crowd that's just right there it's only like a like a hundred people or so and you're right there it's it's so much fun so that's the thing I'm most 
bummed out about missing. Um, even if WrestleMania goes on, there's no way they still have access. Um, uh, the, 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 the event AXXESS, um, because it's all the, the, like most of the appeal of access is meeting superstars being face to face with them, you know, shaking their hands, high fives, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, already they've implemented no, no touching for meet and greets that absolutely carry through access. But that many people with how crowded, man, if you see pictures from New York last year, there was so many people at access despite how hard it was to get there. It was like, it was so difficult to get to access yet. Everybody like, there is so packed. Anyway, imagine if it's in a convenient spot. It would be it would be even more people. It would be crazy. But anyway, I I don't think any of it's going to 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 take place as planned. Um, but uh, absolutely, there's no way that access is taking place now. So I that's what I'm that's what I'm most bummed out about. Um, the other part, like, yeah, they're big shows. Resume is cool. Takeover is always awesome. Smackdown raw. Yeah. All right. Um, but all like the ancillary events that I was planning to go to like Kaiju big battle, uh, um, uh, Josh Barnett's is it Barnett, uh, just uh, blood sport. I think it's blood sport three seeing killer Kelly in the ring, seeing WrestleMania late night on Saturday night. I was so excited for all that. Oh, and uh, Shimmer. I was gonna. I have a ticket for Shimmer on Thursday. And man, all that stuff, like it, it's all it, 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 it all should be canceled because it's it's important for everybody's health. I think at this time. So there you go. It's uh, I'll be I'll be sad to miss out on all of that, but man, hopefully. Hopefully there will be another time. Fingers crossed. Hopefully there will be another time for all these type of events to take place that uh, we'll all get through this. Working together to stay, stay hygienic, stay isolated, stay, stay away from each other if we're coughing and all of that. And oh, as everybody staying as, as healthy as possible so that um, we can get back closer, closer to, to normal as, as possible. But Oh man. Okay. That was bummer part two. I wanted to break it up throughout the prop the, uh, throughout the episode. Um, I, I, I'll have just a little bit more at the end, but not like a whole rambling thing they have already. All right. So let's talk about NXT UK. NXT UK episode 84 for this batch of tapings. We have Andy Shepard, who had previously been uh, one of the interviewers, I think no, he's was he the or was he the ring announcer? I think he, I think he was doing interviews before, and then Nig- and Nigel McGinnis. So both of them got changed up from last time, because uh, last time we had, um, uh, and I think that's now because uh, Tom Phillips is on on um, on Raw, and Aiden English is on Two Hundred Five Live, so they're they're bookending. The weekend of NXT UK shows, there's no way they could, either one of them could get there um, to be or to get back from there. So, um, yeah, I like I really enjoyed both of them. On, I mean, I like Nigel on all the time anyway. Um, and Andy Shepard, I thought he did, I thought he was great. So anyway, uh, Finn Balor, he opens up the show and he says, I didn't come here to boost the ratings. I came here for Walter. And so Imperium comes out. Uh, Finn attacks them a little bit and escapes. And uh, later on, uh, Alexander Wolf is really mad about it. And he demands from Sid Scala and uh, Johnny Saint a match with Finn Balor. And that becomes the main event. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we then had Pretty Deadly, the team of Stoker and Howler. How I don't know their names. Howley? Howley? Holy? Howley or Howley? I don't know. They fought the team of Maloney and Gordon um, and Pretty Deadly won. I like their name so much. Like, they have the best name. Um, I like them, too. I, I'm not sure how I feel about their uh, 
you know, like the wrestling style or stuff, but I, I like their look. They have, uh, they, they have, um, you know, how they carry themselves and stuff like that. It, it's, it's like perfect for that name. And I, yeah, yeah, I'm into it. Um, let's, let's see him in, uh, the, the seven team tag team match that grizzled young veterans have been talking about. Um, that anyway, uh, Right after uh, Alexander Wolf demanded that match with Finn, Jordan Devlin happens upon Johnny Saint and Sid Scala, and uh, they inform him that he's going to defend the the Cruiserweight Championship for the first time on NXT UK, and his opponent will be Travis Banks. And Devlin is like, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> he didn't say whatever, but he like kind of like poofed it about it um and rolled his eyes i i thought it was great jordan devlin oh wait i used to not like him i i'm pro i've i've probably mentioned that i didn't like him at some point he's he's been growing on me a lot he's i I like this guy um then we had noam dar versus legero i was not paying attention at all to this match so i didn't take any notes but uh noam dar won i know at one point he was grabbing on Legero's horns don't grab on people's horns that's another general guideline don't grab people's horns it's it, you're gonna spread viruses don't grab people's horns unless they give you permission to do so another uh, a public service announcement for this episode um up next we had amel versus uh danny luna although with my handwriting it looked like i wrote down danny lung so this match ends in disqualification. I don't remember. I might have circled the wrong name. I circled that Amel won the match, uh, which would mean that she was the one who was attacked by Kaylee Ray first. But I kind of feel like her opponent was attacked first. In which case, her uh, Danny Lung, Danny Luna, <laughs> would have won. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It wasn't for a championship or anything like that. But uh, Kaylar had had a message to send that this division belongs to her and i'm right there with her she's awesome like i really liked i really liked every every moment after she appeared it was great um and that brings us to the main event we had finn balor versus alexander wolf imperium of course tried to get involved uh but the the referee ejected imperium sent them packing and Finn Balor hits the 1916 on Alexander Wolf and wins the match. All kinds of other stuff happens. Yes, of course. But like I said, I wasn't paying the best attention because I was reading about all the news and everything. Oh, not to even mention the stock market. Oh my God. That's a whole other thing. I'm not going to talk about that because I'm done with this episode. Is everything? They, these two episodes were excellent. Go watch them all finn balor fans gotta go watch nxt uk for the next four weeks and maybe for the next forever i don't know (laughs) but um go check it go check both of these episodes out even though now having listened to this episode you know what happens but i think that's okay because i didn't take good notes and i didn't describe how those things happened very well so there you go that's the benefit that's the that's the that's why you want to listen to this podcast because I don't explain things very well so you can still enjoy watching the thing without very much having been explained already um so that's um that's that's it um let me know what you thought about these episodes by oh yeah I did I watched some other stuff but um I already talked about mythic quest what did I, I, I watched something else after that between the last episode and now I, I i watched something else we're talking about but maybe not because i don't remember at all oh, i watched an episode of the new uh the second season of dirty money i think it's called on netflix it was about wells fargo that's very interesting that whole the whole first season was very interesting as well um but i've, I've only watched the one episode from season two but uh if you're interested in all that kind of stuff I recommend checking it out. The second episode is about the guy who's 
um, like he was Wolf of Wall Street as a laundering operation and all of that. I didn't get, I, I stopped watching it a couple of minutes in because I realized that I was, I needed to do something else um, that I didn't want to get wrapped up into another hour of watching it yet. But that second episode was definitely going to be very interesting. Anyway, um, let me know what you thought about these episodes, by t- uh, b- both of these shows, by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your fans. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe. Um, oh, I, I, I started typing this. Uh, putting it in my posts or uh, in the relevant posts, not at the end of everything. When people do the same like motivational thing at the end of every single post or whatever, I find that kind of annoying. But as a sign off for podcast and for posting relevant things, um, I think this is a pretty good one because it kind of spins off of what I've already been saying. Stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses. But instead, it's SSHH. So shh. Stay safe, healthy, and happy out there in all the infinite multiverses. And I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcasts. Bye.